Okay, we're going to modify a servo today. This is a MG995. This is a servo you can buy off of Amazon. Four for $22 or $25, something like that. It's a pretty good standard size servo, metal gears. Um, uh, and it's got about, I think this, this has about 180 degree rotation. Well, every once in a while I do a robotics application where I mount a gear on it. And then I make it run some linear reel or gear it up to something else uh, so that I need, I need more motion than what I can get out of a 180 degree re revolution. So what I've done, I've done this a number of different ways in the past, but something that I found out with these servos is they're not very hard to modify. Um, I've taken the back off of, of one of these and, and I'm going to show you here, we're going to take the top off. If you're careful, you can slide the top of it off and uh, careful not to waste all the grease. But these servos, and I've already taken it out, there's a pin right here. Uh, a pin that's an anti-rotational pin, keeps you from rotating the servo and it going beyond uh, the mechanical limits of it and the mechanical limits of the pot. Actually, you know, if you rotated too far, you'd break the, you'd break the pot that's in there. So I take a little uh, a needle nose and just grab hold of that and pop that pin out. That allows us to rotate 360 degrees. If you want a servo that you want to drive a little car with or whatever, it's simple. You take these off, pop that pin out, put this back on, and solder the two. Uh, wires the power wires directly to the motor and you got a servo that motor that'll run a, you know as drive a wheel or whatever 360 degrees plus and minus but if you the pot is in line of course with the shaft uh, of the drive shaft and if you pull hard enough you can pull it out and I've already loosened it up so it's, it's a lot harder than that but anyway we pull that out and here we have the pot and all the electronics which we're basically just going to move around out of the way so what we have to do now i want to mount a this is a five turn pot i believe you can buy these from vichet uh, either in five turn or ten turns um this is a this is a 535-11502 5k pot okay what we really want to do is we're going to print a new back Okay, we're going to have a hole in it to mount a, this pot, okay, pot will be mounted in here, um, get the washer off, okay, and uh, these print up fairly well, I printed on my, um, my Prusa printer with PETG, did a really nice job, um, and, and, you know, I was curious as to whether or not we'd have the tolerances needed to do this, but Anyway, um, we'll mount the pot on there, which is in line with it. Now what we got to do is basically extend, extend this shaft right here so that it goes down into and mates up with the, with the, with the uh, output drive. And you'll see a slot. There's a slot down in there, but I can't see it. It's two millimeters wide. And you print one of these, and it goes in there, and then we... Put the servo down on it here like this and push it in until it's all the right dimensions now if you want you could pull it back out and dab a little probably some kind of a flexible glue silicon on here to ensure that this won't slip on here this is a pretty tight fit the one that i printed i wouldn't need to do that now i've tried printing these a number of different times and i found that if i printed it uh Without the flats up here, I got a real good, nice, straight print with good steps on it. Um, if you can see that or not. And then take a file and file it down to get this two millimeter width. And then keep trying it until you can you look where the direction of the slot, push it down in there. And you should be able to get it to fit in there. And when you do, then you're all set. You're ready to put this on the pot and slide it all together get it lined up, slide it all together, push it all together, and you now have a servo that's uh, with a 
um, five turn pot you get about three full rev revolutions with a ten turn pot you get about six full revolutions so depending on the size of the gear you can either put maybe a uh, 15 turn 15 uh, uh, point gear on there and use it to to increase your torque or you could put a, a larger gear if you want to get a long travel on a, on a linear, linear object um, so anyway we're all set I've got a cut a notch in the back for these wires to go and we're just sh going to shove this thing down in there until everything all lines up now the one thing I goofed and I forgot to do it is there's not enough room to mount to mount to put these screws in after you pull that out so it's just a matter of put these screws in first okay and then then you'll be able to do it but we'll just for demonstration purposes I'll show you what we're gonna do we're gonna push it down in there and as I do that once it fits motor case there we go boom 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 okay we're together now what we have to do is run the three wires from this pot to here and we're all set and to make sure you get them the right way this is the this is the uh, wiper the, the little single one out here on the end is mate when you turn this pot here uh, counterclockwise uh, look at what pins and the fact that the resistance changes when I turn this counterclockwise the resistance between this pin and this pin goes down and you want the same here when you when that pot turns counterclockwise you want to hook those two pins the wiper is the center one put the wiper center wire to pin there and then uh, the other wire that decreases as you turn a counterclockwise in the other one and then put the remaining wire on that one and you should be all set if the servo if you turn the servo on and it goes and keeps running and never stops reverse these these two wires and you should be in good shape okay that's the gist of it i'm not going to go any farther with it but uh, this uh, allows you to uh, uh, put bigger gears on here have more rotation um and not have to have a lot of the, a lot of the movements that I do robotically. I want to have it go to a certain point and stop. And uh, b before I'd have to put limit switches, uh, either a micro switch or some kind of a sensor to stop it when it got so far. With this, I can just program it. These servos take from about 800 microseconds up to at least two, maybe a little more. So you've got a pretty good acceptance range, and they will handle up to maybe 100 hertz or so now um i'm gonna i'll probably include a few printed gears like this this is a one and a half mod gear i think and uh, I, I just bolted it to the end of the deal but um actually what i generally do now is just print a gear with a five millimeter hole in it and i i've got to spare one of these drive gears and i go out and just press this into the five millimeter hole and it forms the uh, the the uh, ridges onto it and it works fine three millimeter bolt holds it in place and you're good to go hope this is helpful you know i mean it's something i use quite a bit and uh um, i think if you're if your printer's up to snuff why um even though the you're paying five dollars for the servo and maybe 17 18 dollars for the pot i think what you get out of it is, is worth it's a project that's worth doing okay thanks a lot